Welcome to RK3 Designs live feed here on a Tuesday. I am not RK3. I'm Erica with ATD, but I'm going to show you an amazing finish that I hope you guys decide to try for yourself. Right now, I'm just trying to make sure I'm live and I don't understand if I'm not. Let me find out. Oh, good. We're here? Are we here? We're here. Okay, great. Hi. Hello. I'm Erica with ATD on behalf of RK3 Designs. I was just mixing up my pigments and um, watching the weather. We're having quite a bit of weather here in Dallas, Texas. I'm so glad you guys have taken the time to come and art with me today. We're doing a panda marble, but with browns. And I'm super excited to be with you guys today. Hello, everyone. So I'm mixing up a translucent white for skim milk, as Rhonda calls it. This is so that you can see through it, just like this. I learned the other day that it's because of the fat content that it's more opaque or more translucent with milk. And I'm not even sure why I learned that the other day, but I did. And this next color is chestnut from Just Resin. Did I say what white that was? That is top cell white from Color Passion. This one is chestnut from Just Resin. I'm using all paste tonight. This next one, well, as soon as I say that, I realize that I lied to you. This is abalone shell from uh, resin art. You can find all these colors either on my site, artistsolife.com, or rk3designs.com as well, has a lot of them. This next one is also top cell white, but I um, put a little bit more of it in a, a lot less of it in order to make it an opaque white. And so that means I shouldn't be able to see through it at all. Sorry, I just jumped right into it tonight. I don't have any of Rhonda's announcements, but she is packing up and getting ready to do a gig somewhere. She has a countertop to do, so it's just me and the kids tonight. We're going to be arting together, and this is my new luscious, well, it's not new if you're on my, my channel, Artist Till Death, on YouTube, but it is new if you only see my work when I'm on Rhonda's channel. This is an amazing floating gold. It has a great um, kind of diluted sheen when it's in the piece. Let me grab the sample piece I did for this board just to show you the awesome of this gold. See that right down through there, that sheen the very subtle, dirty pour gold. That is the gold I'm using, as well as this beautiful vein here. It all depends on your application. So we're gonna do a little bit of both tonight. And I'm super excited to do this with you guys. I want to thank my mods, Keith and Clara, I believe, are in the house. Um, let's get started. So this is a something, probably 25-inch round uh, cradle board. And let's get started. I'm going to start with my translucent white and just add some around. This is just going to be underpainting. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to go in with my opaque whites. 
Also doesn't have to be perfect. And some of my abalone shell. This stuff has the most subtle sparkle, but it sparkles a little bit of rainbow. Let me get it up real close. See how it's slightly rainbow, but when it's like further away, it, it looks like just a pearlescent or white sparkle. But up close. Nice, right? I know, I know. I love it too. Okay, so I'm going to just kind of, I guess, meld all this out. Ultimately, all I'm trying to do is cover up any raw surface, any of the substrate. I'm just trying to fill that in. I'm so glad you're doing better, Clara. This is gonna be a super quick, not that difficult finish. I would say it's like a 200 level class if it was college course. I don't know if you guys can hear that rain, but these drops are huge, almost hail sizey. How you meld or move these colors around isn't very important. The only important thing right now is to have no dry surface left. This is a kind of a next level grease coat because it's very thin, it's not enough. If I were just to coat my surface with this, it wouldn't be enough really for the whole piece. It's not gonna self level properly if I just used this amount and walked away. So it couldn't be a finish all on its own. Um, and how the colors really lay out doesn't really matter because we're going to do a whole bunch of painting on top of it. All right, let me get another cup. All right, so from the references I have of a panda marble looking finish, um, there are big breaks of the dark color. And for us in this pour, it's gonna be chocolate. And from what I saw, the line weight or how thick or thin your veins are varies across the pour or across the vein. So I don't want this one to be exactly one, I guess, thickness. Hey pups, cool it. Sorry if you can hear my babes in the background. And then I guess I'm gonna do another one here. Maybe just a little one up here as well. All right. I have a couple of drips out through here. That's fine. I like to just kind of work those in, kind of a la background marble. Oh. There's a lot more on that hand than I anticipated, but that's fine. We'll work it in. I think that being able to roll with the punches, so to speak, when it doesn't really go your way is um, a great attribute to have when doing anything with resin. Because a lot of times resin is just kind of going to do what it wants to do. And so you have to sort of roll with it. Oh, what is that? Which one? Oh, the brown? Um, it's um, chestnut from Resin chestnut. Art. I should know that. And so now I'm going to build a dirty right. pour using a translucent white. And just a little bit of chocolate, a little bit more than a swizzle, which is a unit of measure I have on my channel often some Milky Way or abalone, 
some of the opaque whites, some of this amazing gold, which I know you guys are going to completely love. And I'm just going to top it off and layer it some more with my other colors. I always save a little bit of these colors for in a little bit because I'm going to want to add them in to this piece. Everyone says hi, Jeff. Hi. He said hello. So now I've built my dirty pour cup. I'm going to give it just a little stir for interest because if I were to have just poured it out like it was, it wouldn't have looked interesting on the top as it would in the bottom because when you pour everything in, it kind of makes everything kind of mix in the bottom of it, but doesn't really do anything to the top. So if you give it just a little swirl for interest, I feel it looks a lot better. So now we're going to pour out our dirty pour. And because I am going to be able to tilt my substrate, I'm not really too concerned with a lot of how these uh, lines work together because I'm going to tilt everything around in a little bit and kind of change a lot of the direction that everything's laying in right now. My only concern at this point is getting blocks of color onto the surface. And since it's still thin down here, I'm going to add some I'm just going to fill in some of my other colors. Canvas. Thank you. I have a puppy and she has a lot to say. So I apologize. If you could hear her and if she pierced your ears. Okay, so I'm gonna heat this up and tilt it around and then we're going to take it from there. I'm using a heat gun just to pop my bubbles. I know most of you probably use a torch. Um, love working with a torch. But for a lot of my designs, I end up using a heat gun so that I can, because it blows air instead of just pushing heat. So now I'm just going to tilt this. Never underestimate the power of the tilt. So what happens is because we have a lot of translucent colors, you'll see like right, where's my finger? Right here, this translucent is going to roll over that chocolate, that thick chocolate band that we put down. And it's going to give you a lot of shading and beautifulness. I may... I may have named it wrong by calling it panda, but we'll see what you guys think I should call it at the end. So I always tilt it one way and let my design kind of grab at the top and then pull it back. And that gives me a lot of sweeping motions. What you're doing when you tilt your piece is making all of your lines flow cohesively. So when I tilt it all this way, everything's gonna roll. And if it doesn't hit it with some heat, it will then roll in that direction. And so now I'm gonna be concerned with kind of making the flow over here match the flow over here. But before that, I'm going to take you guys down and give you a close-up of what we have so far. See that subtle glow in there of gold? That is the rich gold shimmer. I don't know if Rhonda has that color on her site yet. See how it's just floating there on the surface, all subtle-like? This could act as your pre-amber if you are concerned about... Um, a white piece yellowing. 
See, I didn't add any of these specific bits right here. That's just the new floating gold shining all on its own. It made its own lines and striations and swirls. I just love this color. Um, hopefully, I can get Rhonda to carry that color soon. But in the meantime, if you're interested, I have it on my website, artisttilldeath.com. And so you can see here the translucent white going over the chocolate, making that shading look right there, giving one layer depth because that's what happens when you use uh, translucence. Ooh, I really like that bit too. That looks real marbly. And that's the bit I showed you earlier rolling over the chocolate. All right. So now, sorry about that glare from my lights, first world problems. So now I need for everything to shift this way. Now it looks like I have dripped onto the piece, these three dots. You guys let me know if I should take them out or let them live. So I heated just this area because that's what I want to move most or fastest. And that's just a great thing about the viscosity of stone coats epoxy is if you need it to move faster, you just hit it with a little bit of heat. So I'm trying to tilt a bit of this chocolate band off. and tilt it back in. Um, I'm also trying to avoid having all of the dark color in the center. Um, when you have all of your dark or light colors in the center, it throws off the balance of the piece. There's a bunch of technical rules I can tell you guys about. Um, line weight and having um, a good flow of your product, I mean, of your, mm, of your piece. So right now it looks like it's a little heavy in the center because of how it's laying out. So you have two options. You can add more dark on the outside or you can tilt it around till you have these bits where you want them. I don't wanna throw any more resin off of the piece. So what I'm going to do is balance it with a little bit of the chocolate that I have left. And to do that, I'm gonna throw another line here. And Maybe I'll come through right here. Of course, you don't have to add these extra lines if you don't want to. Your piece is all you. This is just how I do what I do. I think I'm gonna add some white right here on the edge because my palm kind of got to it a little bit. Marblelicious, I'll take them. So I think I wanna add some of the harsher lines with our rich gold shimmer that I talked to you guys about earlier. And I think what I'm gonna do is maybe kind of mirror shadow along this chestnut color. Oh. You can let your um, pigment rest in the cup for a while and wait for it to thicken so you can draw 
a, um, a really easy line across your surface. Or if you're impatient like me, just take your time and make sure you're feeling pretty steady. There we go. I don't want to bring it all the way down. So I'm just going to feather it off with my finger. Oh my goodness. <gasps> I love this color. Now I need to balance it on this side. Um, I'm thinking about teaching a class on how to position your veins, your rivers in a piece. Um, so that it's aesthetically pleasing according to like the rule of thirds, the golden ratio, et cetera. Uh, I just need to make sure that that's something people would be interested in learning. So I thought I would present it to you guys and see if that's something you need. Because sometimes you look at a piece and you're not really sure where to put your vein, where to put the river, how to lay out the big bands of color. And I went to college for art. And so I don't know everything about everything, but I'm happy to share what I do know. And so I'm thinking about putting a class together around that idea. But I wanted to get y'all's thoughts. Need to add a little something down here and then we'll be all finished. But I feel like it's calm right here, so I don't want to mess that flow up. I may just, I would come off this, but then it'll look like it's pinched here and pinched here and that's just not gonna do. So I may just have to run a thin line with my patent no longer pending stir stick. Just along the design that there's already here, just so that the shine matches. Just so there's something floating here and across. I think I need to put something here as well. Um, in my pattern layout design class, it would be um, a lot of showing you why things kind of read in a certain way to people. I feel like this is bothering me, this white little in the middle. Um, Yeah, I want to talk about why some things look aesthetically pleasing and some don't, why a lot of times things that aren't exactly even uh, look better than things that are perfectly even on both sides. Uh, there's a lot that goes into it. But I'm not going to bore you guys if you don't want to hear about it. So what do you guys think? I'm going to bring you down as per usual. You're so awesome, Christy. All right, let's check it out up close and in person. In person ish. So you can see the new floating gold, that beautiful ribbon. Wait for it. Okay, there we go. The beautiful ribbon with the spine down the middle here. That is that new gold. And it also can be found right there, that subtle band. I don't know why I really like it when colors spine down the middle. And that's just a byproduct of some of the particles sinking and some of them floating. But that same gold is also what's giving this very faint sheen of gold that's just in the piece all of that it's so elegant and look it's just selling on its own for just no reason 
I love it. I love it. I love it. But it doesn't matter what I think. What do you guys think? What do you think of my uh, panda marble that's chocolate? That may not really count as panda marble. With a brand new pigment for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this live brought to you by ATD on behalf of RK3 or the other way around. Um, and I hope you give this a shot. If you do, please post it in RK3 Designs Insiders page because we love seeing what you're up to. And we always, I mean, I'm just speaking on behalf of myself and slash the mods and slash the other people in there. I always get inspired by what you guys create. And so please keep posting. Don't forget about my page, ATD's Poor People, where it is more focused around art resin applications. But um, I think that if you invest, I don't know. I always like to use different art techniques in the countertops that I do and vice versa. And so I hope you guys check it out. I hope you love the piece and I hope you have an awesome evening. Um, we say be kind to one another because you never know what someone's going through. But you can also, oh my goodness, I blanked out on Rhonda saying. I know be creative and move forward, but I forgot the first. I forgot the first. But you guys know what the saying is, and I hope you do all of those things. Be kinder and rewind. Oh, yeah. Don't be scared. Be creative and move forward. All those things are important in art, in countertops, and in life. And so from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to Rhonda's channel. Please subscribe to my channel, Artist Till Death, to see my resin stuff as well as my everything else that I do. And um, support small businesses like Rhonda's and my own. Uh, it makes a difference to us and it means the world. Hope you guys have an awesome evening, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Um, till then, um, we'll see you later. But I also, on my channel, I always show people my babes, and so that's what we're going to do. That's my Bowie. He's a big boy, and this is who was making all the noise earlier. That's Canvas. She's a crazy person. Y'all have a good night, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. We said bye.